Um, one of the reasons I found myself writing um, was because I knew that women's voices were, you know, they were hushed or misconstrued. And oftentimes I didn't even see my reality in the books that I was reading. So um, I'm excited to see, you know, 10 years in the writing game. And I'm ex even more excited to continue writing, you know, diverse and authentic stories for women and the men that love them. Hi, I'm Nicole Williams, and I am the author of Tangled Web of True Love Tales. To celebrate the 10 year anniversary edition, I will be talking to some amazing professionals in their perspective fields. With the goal to get untangled, we will be discussing topics displayed in this fiction book and applying them to life. Conversation is key. And today, I am excited about who is joining me. I am so thrilled to have our special guest today. She is a certified inner work life coach in LMSW. She's the owner of Realize You, where she partners with ladies as they transform from the inside out into the next best version of themselves. Please welcome Jonitra Hunter. Thank you for having me, Nicole. Oh, of course. <laughs> Now what we're doing is we're celebrating the 10 year anniversary of Tangled Web of True Love Tales and those topics that stem from this fiction novel will be brought into a real life conversation. I wanted to start off with this one subject that seems to um, pretty much be consistent throughout the book and it's this idea of guilt. How women naturally just kind of pick up this um, emotion or is, is it even an emotion but it's a negative uh, space to be in and it's sometimes not even, you know, something they intentionally did, or maybe even it's not their fault, but they carry around guilt. So in the book, you'll find that it could be from ranging from choices in careers, or it could be ranging in relationships not working out, and then even just, you know, it could be children with children, not being able to have children or having children and things of that nature. So I wanted to bring that into uh, the conversation and ask you, what does self-care not look like? What's the opposite of self-care? Okay, so the opposite is would be that guilt, picking up things that aren't yours to begin with, taking on the energy and um, I guess the ideas of other people instead of being true to yourself and authentic in your being regardless of what that looks like for you. Mm -hmm. I think that's the opposite of guilt. I mean, the opposite of self-care. Mm -hmm. um, is caring for others instead of yourself, making sure that they're okay and putting yourself second. Um, Self-care has to be first and primary. Okay, and it's funny you brought that up because I do have um, this question about why is it such a touchy subject? Why do people feel um, so guilty about doing that? What are they I think it's with? not wanting to look selfish. Okay, Because okay. that's <laughs> the difference between self-care and being selfish, people kind of cross those lines mm -hmm. um, but it's not selfish to take care of yourself and it's important to take of yourself first so that you can have enough to give for someone else they say you can't pour from an empty cup so you exactly. have to you know fill yourself up make sure you're full in there in order to be able to give anything meaningful to other people okay so let's talk about this the people that are naysayers um, there are plenty of folks out there who feel like self-care is this trending topic or it's a fad that are later on be you know often done with but it seems to be here to stay even though it's a buzzword mm -hmm. so what would you say are long-lasting benefits to someone who actually put self-care into place just overall peace of mind um, being able to go throughout life and all the challenges knowing that you have taken the time to take care of yourself whatever may come you know that you're at peace or that you are grounded, mm -hmm. um, secure, um, regardless of the ups and downs and everything that's going on in our world and in our relationships and at work and everything, you know that you have taken the time necessary to care for yourself first so that you can deal with all these outside stressors and these factors and different things that, you know, can come in and could throw you off track if you weren't, you know, in alignment or secure or taking care of yourself first. So that centered feeling, whatever that looks like. Now, I love what you're doing with uh, the Sacred Circle. What exactly is that? Tell us about that. So I run a Sacred Sister Circle every month where a small group of ladies, um, maybe no more than 10 ladies, come together and we meet 
and just have time to process, just have time to release and let go of all the things that are, you know, holding up or you don't feel like you can talk to other people about kind of sensitive topics, but you need to express these things. So we, we come together once a month mm -hmm. and we just sit and talk and laugh and cry and eat and whatever we need to do to feel like we've, we've been heard and that we, you know, had that time for ourselves. And in sisterhood, that's the important part where, you know, we meet with people who have gone through things that you've gone through right. um, and can lend some advice or some ideas on how to deal with where you are. What are some concrete uh, tips that you would give uh, those in that circle or even outside of the circle maybe for you know viewers at home mm -hmm. uh, what would you actually say to them that they can get into place in order for them to start that process of self-care I would say one of the most easiest things to do is to journal mm, just I writing like down whatever comes to your mind it's like a brain dump whatever you have get it out of you and onto the paper if you feel like you can't talk to people about what's going on with you it's good to journal so at least you are able to express what's going on. That would be like the most, I think, important thing that you can do, make time for. Secure okay. that time to journal. Um, and then I would say, um, just being outside in nature, mm. being quiet, being still, finding ways to connect with like trees, birds, air, you know, just being outside <laughs> and being still. And you know, we are in Houston, so that's a, one of those things where it's like a time lapse for yeah. me. Like I can appreciate nature, for a certain year, <laughs> but I will quickly find a yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. But yes, journaling, I love yes. that idea. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I know self care. I know it looks different for everybody. For me, it could be about three different things. Um, I used to have where I would go every Saturday morning mm -hmm. to a movie or a matinee. Yes. That was my own thing. I just needed, you know, time to kind of escape mm -hmm. uh, reality, and I would just sit in the men the middle of the uh, cinema and just watch the film yes. or whatever the case may be and then um, another thing that I really enjoy would be vision boarding like okay. the same kind of concept of gathering together uh, doing that in community in space um, and then just in general I'm always a fan of writing definitely mm -hmm. that is just therapeutic so right. what about you what are some things that you actually have in place for yourself okay Anitra? so right now I am uh, spending more time outside mm -hmm. and being mindful so mindfulness is another tool to where you you're outside but you're not just going through the motion you're taking time and you're noticing the little flower that might have been a weed but you know you see the beauty in it mm -hmm. noticing um, the different colors of leaves or the birds that just stop right there just to speak to you. So right now I'm practicing that mindfulness. But I like what you said about um, going, taking yourself on dates, like mm -hmm. going to the movies. That's important too. Mm -hmm. Like just to have fun and play and do what brings you joy. Um, so that's another thing that I've been doing as well. Okay, cool. Now it's funny. Um, I know we've known each other for a long time. Yes. Now, I always remember high school, and she, you'll bring up college. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> how that happens. And you did kind of mention this already, but how important is self-care in community? What is the benefit of that? I know in isolation it has its benefits, mm -hmm. but what are you getting from, you know, people coming together to... Are they practicing self-care? Is it changing? What, what would you say about that? So in community, you get like the shared experience. Okay. You know, it's not just you on this journey and all of your um, happenings are happening in isolation. Like you're, you know, it's about um, people who have been there and who have gone through the things that you can have gone through can shed light and can sh share with you what worked for them in this situation. You know, what didn't work so that you can avoid some pitfalls. Mm -hmm. um, but also just knowing that you're not alone in it. You know, there's so many people who have been exactly where you are and have made it through to the other side. And so that's what's so encouraging to be able to hear those success stories and to know that there is light at the end of the tunnel and that you're not alone. Mm. And it's been wonderful to work with you, you know, in business and different yes. projects as well. And I think that's an element that we oftentimes forget that self-care could also be just checking in with your friend or your, as I say, uh, brand uh, friend or things of that nature like you just just the simple how's it going how's it really right. going that kind of thing can kind of go a very far way now I want you to think back and do some reflecting because as far as the book the women in the book range in age but most of them are 25 to 40 but the majority of them are in their late 20s trying to decide you know where they're going trying to some people are open to self-reflection and some are not some in the book are not even aware of that's what they need to do in that space and place 
And so what I want you to do is think about your 25 year old self, which I know when I'm asking this, we're not far from it, but it still is a different place that we were in at 25. What advice would you give your 25 year old self about love, life, and dreams? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and love, I would give my 20 year old self, I would tell her, just be patient. You don't have to rush anything, make things try and happen, just be patient. What's for you will come to you. Um, you won't miss anything that's yours and what goes away that you thought was yours wasn't really yours, so okay. it's okay, just be patient. Um, so that's what I would tell myself in love. Um, what was it? In Dreams and life. Okay, dream big. I would tell myself to dream big. You have what it takes to make it happen. Um, mm -hmm. And also I would say just in life in general, there's going to be I would warn myself that there's going to be ups and downs and mm -hmm. ebbs and flows and it all comes together and it's going to work out uh, perfectly. Even when it looks like it's not perfect, mm -hmm. it's setting you up for the next thing. Mm -hmm. The next thing that sets you up for the next thing and it's all perfection working itself out. Oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love those. All right. Well, I hate that our conversation is coming. I wouldn't say to an end. It's not all the way over. Mm -hmm. But for today, yes, you want to stay tuned. First, I want to say thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you. thank you. And then I also want to thank the audience for watching this whole period of time. This whole week has been wonderful. And what we want you to do is stay tuned so you can carry the conversation on with us. So you'll be able to see how to get in contact with us and also where you can get your book, Tangled Web of True Love Tales, Anniversary Edition. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time.